Hi, I am Otito Victor. Welcome to this new video about the Batman the movie. I thought it could be a good idea to address some of the most popular issues toward the Batman movie. Uh, because I still think it's a masterpiece after watching the movie five times. And yes, some issues I won't be able to defend them. I won't be able to say people are wrong to think some things. But I can tell some of the issues that come in every review or in a lot of reviews. A lot of the issues can be explained by the story, the script. So this is not really a critique. This is more of some kind of analysis of some elements in the story that people are not always on board with. So I hope guys will enjoy. And now I will have a quick intro after the intro to make it interesting in some ways and also to support my ideas of a movie can be flawed and be a masterpiece at the same time. People tend to think The Dark Knight is the best Batman movie ever made. It's a masterpiece. People like it. I liked it a lot and I rewatched it recently. And fun fact, I found issues as well. And it's still an amazing movie in my own opinion. Now, I will show a scene in The, the Dark Knight. Because The Dark Knight is a very praised movie, and I will explain a few things about the scene. So now you have the scene right there. I clicked pause on it, and you can see the guy is in a courtroom, and apparently one of the witness or one of the convicted, I'm not quite sure uh, of the context, uh... The most important thing is a gun inside a courtroom. How did this got inside? There's no scene where anybody steal a gun from a cop. So, how did this gun pass through the uh, metal detector? Uh, there's no scene prior to this telling us how the gun went inside the courtroom. And courtroom are usually very uh, controlled and secured because otherwise that kind of stuff would be a daily thing and people would die on a daily basis because a lot of courtroom see murder uh, suspect being um, interrogated, I guess. Or even witness that would have some kind of uh, revenge in mind. So this is one issue. The second issue is we are led to believe there was a malfunction on the gun. All convenient. Now, this is two small issues, right? I agree with you. Does this mean these issues take away the quality of the movie overall i don't think so but that's just my statement and as i was watching the movie uh i found other issues here and there none of said issue took away the quality of the movie and my enjoyment for it now with that out of the way Let's go over to popular issue with the Batman. I only wanted to speak about that scene in the Dark Knight because the Dark Knight is a very praised movie and I think it's much more praised than the Batman and I can understand why. Do people forget plot armor in this scene? I say that because they fell from all... I, I really don't know how many floor they fell from. But this was really I. You have seen it. Now, the whole scene looks cool. 
but the fact that their impacts cracked the windows in the car means they they fell hard on that rooftop and when you fall hard you break all of your bones if you fall from a very high place they are both fine now as of the call the cape i should say maybe they there's some kind of gadget i don't know about or i forgot about that gadget and the cape so the cape is some kind of parachute but i don't remember it if it's some kind of parachute so tell me how did they survive that i call this plot armor now maybe i'm wrong but maybe i made a point the first among all issues i found in a lot of reviews batman being inconsistent some people say it's a myth some people say he is real some people are scared of him other people are not scared now there's a lot of logic explaining why it's not really consistent first of all batman is on his year two so it's normal he is probably a myth now another logic thing we could assume and this is ed cannon uh Batman don't just go inside the Iceberg Lounge every day or every week. So people in the Iceberg Lounge probably think he is a myth until they, they meet him uh, in a scene people didn't like. Look, it's Ed Cannon. What if it's the first time and Batman goes... In the building the iceberg launch and people are surprised and they think it's a joke they think it's a prank or someone cosplaying that could make sense and then they they think they can take on the myths because it's not real for them they don't see batman every day now if you go on the streets if you are a thug in the streets if you are a criminal in the street you may have experience past conflict with the Batman so you know he is real or you may know someone that experienced something with the Batman so you know he is real so for people in the street it's normal for them he is real and he is not some kind of myth because the Batman is patrolling the city uh, every night he is not patrolling the iceberg lounge every night but that's just my take on it like it's you cannot like say for facts some things are real if you did not really experience it now another popular issue i i have seen in many reviews uh batman body armor he is invincible he cannot die look there's not that much tension but even if you take away the body armor even if you make him like easy to kill there's still no tension because the batman is your main character and you have a two-hour movie so you need to explain why he doesn't die on the first uh, action scene where people have guns and the way the fights are shown i'm fine with him being bulletproof but that's just me you can have tension with other stuff but not really with the action because you know your main character won't die in the first 30 minutes if you don't give the full body armor bulletproof and almost impossible to kill well it will be hard for you to explain how the batman survived one night Sometimes I'm wondering, oh, the Batman in 
in the Dark Knight, uh, the Nolan movie, or the Dark Knight Rises, oh, Batman survived. Because, yeah, in Batman Begins, I can understand, because in Batman Begins, he used League of Shadows tactic, he backstab people, he tried to take them out before they realize he's there. But, right now, the most recent takes on the Batman is he is very physical, he's a good warrior, he knows how to fight. So based on that, how can you make him survive a fist fight where people bring guns and he doesn't have any? So, I will also add this up. He is messed up. At many points in the movie, he is messed up, especially at the end. He is messed up. So yes, his body armor protects him, but he still has scars in his body. And trust me, these scars are probably bullet wounds. So I'm fine with him having a full armor, because that's the only way he can survive Gotham. That's the only way he can survive any encounter with people with guns. Now, there's tension when he wants to save people. That's the tension. That's the tension in this movie I liked. And this is what they went for. So I won't go too deep into that. I'm just saying you can do tension white out placing your main character in arm's way. There was a lot of tension when Selena wanted to kill Carmen Falcone. There was a lot of tension when Selena wanted to kill Kenzie. There was a lot of tension when Alfred was in danger because of the Riddler. So, if your main character cannot really die because he needs that plot armor, you can do well by placing tension over other elements, other character in your story. And this is why I still like the movie a lot. On the reviews I've seen, there was another issue. The issue where Batman, the first time he goes at the Iceberg Lounge, he goes by the main entrance and asks to enter. Now, for me, it's not an issue. Because we had a very good fight scene, I liked fight scene, I liked action. Now, I can defend this by using Ed Cannon again. Batman wants to show he's the boss. He wants to present himself. He wants to see the penguin. He wants attention. That's why he entered there. I don't think at that point he thought people would really fight him. But he didn't care. He was like, okay, if they fight, I will fight them and beat them. And the other Ed Cannon there is... He's on here too. So sometimes he will do weird stuff. It's normal. Now, if it's year 5 Batman and he still does it, well, it's weird. But it's year 2 Batman, he's still very early, so I can accept it at some extent some weird stuff happening. And that led to a very good action scene. Take away the, the entire moment on the bar, you take away an action scene. And... That's fine, the movie can still work without all that action scene, but is it worth it? Now, I have seen a whole video about G.I. Joe. I will leave his video in the description below because I do respect that guy's work and his video essay was amazing. Now, he spoke about plot convenience. And uh, the bar scene. Now, I won't go too deep into that. I will just condense the information. Basically, out of flock, Batman can progress in his investigation. 
out of luck, Batman meets Selena Cal. And people don't like that kind of luck because it's plot convenience. But I will tell you this. No movie is perfect, as I mentioned earlier. And Selena Cal as a character did brought something very good. Now, can the setup be better? Yes. Can the writing be better? Yes. Did they still make the story work? Yes! Despite luck, everything works. And sometime in real life, you can have luck. And we can also speak about Ed Cannon here. Maybe Selena, each half an hour, she goes to the Penguin to... to give her a cocktail. I don't know. It's, it's the best I can do to defend this. Um... Nothing is perfect. Don't expect perfect stuff. So, yeah. Another very popular issue is this movie focuses a lot on the Batman and they don't care about Bruce Wayne. They did not work on any Bruce Wayne. And I am fine with it. We had so many past movie with the Batman in the title and in the main character that having another Bruce Wayne would just feel like we already seen the movie. We already seen things unfolding. This is a new take. The Batman and Bruce as a character in this movie, they are the same. And at the end of the movie, the, the meeting with the Riddler, the Riddler says, People see you wearing a mask, but what I see is the real you. And this is true. And this is a Bruce Wayne with trauma. And this is why it's interesting. I don't want to see Playboy, Playboy Millionaire again. Because we I have seen it with the Nolan trilogy. Now... If they include Bruce Wayne in the sequel or the third movie in the trilogy or the saga, who cares? I, I will be happy if they do it right. But this movie don't need any Bruce Wayne. And even like Alfred and Bruce, they speak at some point and And Alfred wants Bruce to take over the company and... He says to Bruce, it's your parents' legacy, and then Bruce says, what I'm doing right now as the Batman is my parents' legacy. So you can see his focus is on the mission. This is what I like. It's a new Batman. It's not a re of things we already have seen. And even in the comics about what I heard, I haven't read comics yet, but trust me, one day I will start my collection of comics. With the good ones, of course, because I've heard the most recent one are trash. But year one and two, uh, Batman, he was like that. So I'm fine with him being like that in this movie. Another issue people have, the bomb scene. Now, people say, oh, uh, before the bomb went off, Batman should have run away. It's stupid. Now, I will defend this with the movie. Like, it's not even Ed Cannon. There's a line explaining that behavior. And that line is, is explained later on in the movie. I will agree on that. It's something very stupid. And the Batman surviving was out of luck. But this makes sense in the movie. This makes sense with the Batman itself. Here's the explanation. At some point at the hospital, Bruce says to Alfred, um, he's not scared to die. He's scared to lose people around him. This is deep for the, the the Bruce character and this is a touching moment and at other points in the movie even says at Alfred I don't care what happens to me 
So these lines explain why the Batman was not really afraid by the bomb and why he stood there and just got the blast. Now, is it stupid for a normal being? Yes, but he thought he was fearless. I even he even said it at the hospital to Alfred. I thought I was fearless. I thought I conquered fear. This is explaining the behavior with the bomb. So this is not an issue with the movie. You just didn't understand the movie. Now to reinforce that, this movie is, is a lot about trauma and every character has some kind of trauma somewhere. And this is why I think this is well done. Another issue people have in reviews, the lack of Alfred. He has probably foreseen, maybe more, maybe less, but it's around foreseen. Now, the movie doesn't need Alfred much more than that. First of all, he is out of commission for most of the movie because of the bomb. Second, I don't see how he could bring anything else to the story because the movie is already three hours long and most of the plot don't need Alfred around. Now, he is very important to Bruce as a character. But you don't need to always see Alfred to see how important he is. At some... Like, among the best scenes in the movie are the scene with Alfred and Bruce. So I'm fine with having four scenes with the both of them. Because they are well done. If you have ten scenes with Alfred and Bruce you may lose some impact. In the Nolan Trilogy, I don't remember any uh, impactful moments with Alfred. I only remember two scenes. One in the Dark Knight when he burns the letter that Rachel wrote saying she's not in love with Bruce. And the second one is when he leaves Bruce because Bruce self-destruct. These are the only two scene I remember from the Dark Knight trilogy where Alfred was there. Now, of course, there was a funny scene in the first movie where he says, uh, where Bruce says to Alfred, tell them the joke you know, like, Alfred only knows one joke. But most of the Alfred stuff in the Nolan trilogy, I forget about that stuff. Nothing is really impactful, nothing is really amazing. It was a good Alfred, don't get me wrong. That was a very good Alfred, but I don't know. He felt overused. I I really don't know. Now, in the Batman, the few scenes we have with him, he helps Bruce with the investigation to solve the murder. He explained to us how broken Bruce is and how he loved Bruce and how he tried his best to be a good father figure even if he wasn't. A good father and he only helped Bruce to learn how to fight. I didn't feel the need to have more Alfred in the movie. So it's fine to only have a few scenes with Alfred. We know how important he is because of the hospital scene. And if you don't get it, well, it's on you for not watching or listening to what people say in the movie. Now, this one is an issue I have as well, so it will be really hard to defend. The whole message behind the movie. Now, I will tell you this. The message is the reason why Riddler is killing people. So, I'm fine with it. I still don't like it because it's dumb. And it's Hollywood saying to executive and producers speak about rich scumbag, rich white people are evil, rich white people are bad. 
We get it. We understand. All, almost every character has a line like that except Bruce because he's rich himself and white. So at least they did not parody that. But that's also an issue for me. But is it something you see lurking around every scene? No. You only see it in weird dialogue of characters pissed off and angry at stuff. So it's fine. It did not took me out of the movie. I still don't like it. But there are things I don't like in some movies. But I still like the movie. Like the fight choreography in the Nolan trilogy. Sorry, but it's poor. It's... It's old. It's early 2000. It's early 2000. Did I still like the three movies? Yes. Can I still find some enjoyment when there's action and people fighting in the Nolan trilogy? Yes. But that's the thing. You can dislike things and still like the, the final product and still thinking it's a masterpiece. Now, in a lot of reviews, I've heard people complaining about the Riddler being not consistent and being very different from the start in comparison of the ending. And... I will go deep into the Ed Cannon and I will say this part of the story didn't bother me because I have seen it my own way. The Riddler is like the Batman, but he kills people. The Riddler is a vigilante more extreme than the Batman. Edward Nashton at the other end the guy underneath the mask is a nerd happy when people give him attention. This is the way I see the character and this is the only explanation I got. And the movie also has a line where we got the Riddler speaking with uh, the Batman. When the Riddler has been arrested and he's in jail, he He's speaking about his suffering and what led him to becoming that monster. And that also explains why he got arrested at the end. He wanted attention. He's a nobody. Nobody cared about him. Nobody thought about him. Nobody liked him. He was just a nobody. And Edward wanted more. He wanted attention. He wanted... To have some eats, if you see what I mean. So, his fans on the blog, they gave Edward what he wanted. So, of course, he will be acting happy and weird with his fans because his fans are giving him what he wants. Now, of course, he says he, he used focus viol violence. Focus violence. To drive his crusade as the Riddler. The Riddler is angry toward Gotham. He wants to tear Gotham apart. He wants to destroy Gotham. That's the, that's Riddler. He wants to fix the wrong he sees in the city and the rich people. Edward's fan and the other end did nothing wrong. They, well... They are evil as well because they, they took guns and they shot people. But what I mean by there is they were with Edward. They were supporting Edward. They were helping Edward. And if Edward was acting the same way toward his fan, then the way he acted toward Gotham, for example, you could see some kind of Stockholm Syndrome. He abuses his fan and his fan are keep praising him. Yeah. So I'm fine with the Riddler and Edward being two different characters. 
And I think this is also what the writer wanted to do with the Riddler. They wanted to uh, show what Bruce can be one day. The Playboy and the Batman. I will also say one last thing about the Riddler and consistent Riddler people point out too. Easy Psycho, don't search too far. Some things don't make sense with him. And that's why he's some kind of parallel to Bruce. He's also a psycho. That's why Penguin, when he sees Batman driving uh, toward him and he, he screams, in his car. Dive cycle! It's... That's the characters for you. Now, the next popular issue we got. Um, it's the Riddler getting caught. People don't understand why he got caught. And I will repeat myself because I touched a bit the topic on the previous issue Edward wanted attention he wanted attention he was a nobody and he wanted people to remember him that's why he just wanted to get caught and he also felt like he accomplished his mission he felt like he succeeded in his mission and he did win at the end of the movie. Even before uh, the city blew up. He killed city officials. The mayor, the commissioner, and the DA. He already killed three corrupt people. And he also killed the informant. So, the Riddler won. And this is another reason why I like this movie so much. And this is why you should not see the Riddler getting arrested as being stupid or inconsistent or bad written, bad writing. Because it's not bad writing. If it's part of your villain goal to have attention and you give attention to the villain, then you succeed. This is well written in my own opinion. Now, for the next one, I will go Ed Cannon again. In the Ed Cannon, we know serial killer. Sometimes they follow their target to know what they do on a daily basis, so they can have the right window to kill their target. And this could work with the Riddler because the Riddler is very calculated. He knows what he is doing and he doesn't do mistake as said by the Batman when they capture the Penguin to interrogate him. Now, the issue people have is how did the Riddler got the pictures of the mayor and Annika? Now, my answer is, the Riddler was following the mayor for a few days, probably, maybe a few weeks, maybe a few months, I don't know. It's not explained in the movie, but we could understand he is following the mayor. Now, I will use also another scene. The first opening scene. We see someone spying on the mayor. Now, because later in the movie, we see the Batman doing the same with Selena Cal. Maybe some people may say, oh, the Batman was doing the same to the mayor. I don't think so. Why the Batman, before the murder, it would be after the mayor? I don't see why the Batman would spy on the mayor. And nothing ends at the Batman investigating the mayor before the Riddler killed the mayor. So I do think the person spying on 
the mayor is the Riddler. It's the best explanation I got on the first scene, and there's nothing really that truly contradicts my statement. Maybe I missed something despite my five watches, but I do think the person spying on the mayor was Riddler. And this is why the Riddler knew exactly the moment when he could enter the mayor room and kill the mayor. Because I doubt he would stay in, in the room the entire time. And when would they know exactly when to strike? No, it's... The Riddler is very calculated, so it would only make sense if he was following the mayor. Now, as of the picture, since he is following the mayor, he can have something to take the picture. It's, it's not that complicated to connect some dots. That's the only explanation, or the only other explanation I could I could get, and this is also Ed Cannon. Maybe one of his followers took the pictures after uh, the Riddler said to the follower, uh, go take some pictures of the mayor. Or maybe it's Osh, because they spoke about Osh later on. We are led to believe Osh is dead, but... Maybe Osh is a mystery in other movies. So there are a lot of explanations how he got the picture of Anikia and the mayor. Now, next issue, some people thought in the third act that Batman blowing up the ceiling was bad. He would never do such thing. There was an emergency, the Batman needed to go there fast and take down people, so it, act, it acts as a surprise attack that is fast enough to shock everyone. Is it dangerous? Yes, but it's needed. The Batman had no time to just climb some ladder and meet the people with the guns. It's just not happening. That's why he blew up the ceiling, and that's why I'm fine with it. There's no true issue, but people like to nitpick. I just don't understand that nitpick. There was an emergency, the Batman needed to do some action quick, he blew up the ceiling and entered. As simple as that. The next issue... I cannot defend it, I will just address it. The mayor getting shot and surviving because she got shot like the abdomen. This is dumb. Uh, I will be honest here. Maybe it's because the guy don't know how to aim. That's the only explanation that can make sense. Uh, but as I said earlier, even very good movies give plot armor to some character. And I will give you another example from The Dark Knight again, because The Dark Knight is known as a masterpiece. I will also speak about plot armor again in The Dark Knight. RV Dent. Only half his face was burned. Now you will tell me only half of his face went in the oil. But there was oil all over the place, so can you explain to me how come only half of his face had oil? And when fires is on you, when the fire is on you, it melts everything. Not just the part of your face with oil. Here again, The Dark Knight, I like this movie, one of my favorite movie ever but it has some flaws it's a masterpiece yes but it has some flaws the same goes in the batman with the mayor real real being shot and surviving this is plot convenience this is plot armor things happen 
as I keep saying in this video, does this mean the movie is bad? No. A bad movie is filled of that kind of stuff and makes you tap out of the movie or forget you're watching uh, like a movie. It makes you uh, wanting to end the movie. Another nitpick, another issue I've seen on many reviews. The Riddler being able to see the bomb going off. Look. Things like that happens in a lot of movies. On the fly, on the go, I don't have any perfect example with the Dark Knight. But I'm pretty sure if I rewatch a movie, I can find things like that. Um, now. We could explain that since on the map at least there were bombs all around Gotham, can expect maybe if the Riddler is on the other side of the jail, he can still see a few bombs going off. I'm bad at geography. Regardless, it's really hard to defend. This is a nitpick from nitpick. This is an issue to have an issue because there are other stuff in the movie you didn't like so you want to point out another issue. And look, it's really hard to defend. But as I said, nothing is perfect. I don't expect my product to be perfect. It's made by a human being and human beings are not perfect. So expect stuff that are not perfect. Now, here's another plot convenience. The right person at the right moment. Uh, when Bruce find out about the talker to reveal the map of the city underneath the... the ground, I guess, in the Riddler's room. I don't have anything to defend this, but... Uh, it's truly plot convenience, but if you truly search, as I keep saying, you can find plot convenience in a lot of things. And uh, we needed the Batman to find the bombs, otherwise it would be too slow to react. And I'm fine with that plot convenience. Uh, on my own. I didn't find any issue with that. I needed someone to tell me that's a plot convenience and that's an issue. And that's why I'm not perfect as a critique and that's why I don't really critique that much. But regardless, it's not obvious and the person pointing that out is very smart. You have points for that. But... It's not perfect. It has flaws. And for each flaws, I have maybe two or three things I liked about the movie. There's much more things I like about the movie than things I didn't like. I actually liked everything outside of the message. And one scene we will go over very soon. Now, we are by the end of... The third act, we get the last henchman about to blow up Bruce Ed. This is another issue people have. I have it as well. I cannot defend this thing by saying much. I cannot defend this thing with the movie. I just can't. So basically, Bruce is hanging on a ledge and one of the henchmen takes his time to reload his gun and then he walks he walks to get closer and he aim at Bruce Ed with his gun to blow up Bruce Ed but then Catwoman saves the day look I cannot really defend it it's one of my few issues it's an issue everyone has but if you're really being realistic, if you really want this to 
lift all blood armor. Bruce Wayne dies. You don't have a sequel. You don't have an ending. It's anticlimactic. Climactic. It's basically not a good ending. Now, the good guys don't always win, and you still can have a good ending. The Batman lost. The Riddler won in this movie. And the ending was still very good, and I was satisfied with it. So, yeah. You just don't kill off Batman this way. <laughs> so I'm happy they saved him, and I'm happy of that blood armor. <laughs> now, is it wrong? Yes, they could have went other ways to spare us that blood armor, but I guess they were out of ideas. I really don't know. Another popular issue. People think there's no character growth with Bruce Wayne or Batman or whatever. I disagree and the monologue at the start and the end explains everything. There's also the hospital scene with Alfred and Bruce that also explains parts of Bruce journey and growth. At the start of the movie, Bruce thinks he is fighting his the legacy of his father and he, he thinks his father is a boy scout. He thinks his father is perfect and at the end of the movie he realizes his father was as corrupt as the people being killed in Gotham and currently in currently this is part of his character arc he is wondering if his mission makes sense if he has the right to do this mission since it's based on his father dying and his father not being the one he thought he was now more character growth with that he thought he conquered fear, but he did not. He is scared to lose people he cares about. Now, another thing. At the start of the movie, he calls himself Vengeance. At the end of the movie, someone, one of the henchmen of the Riddler, calls himself Vengeance. So now he realizes his impact. At the start of the movie, Bruce says in his monologue and his journal, he is saying he don't know if he has an impact in the city. At the end of the movie, he says, I know I have an impact in the city. It's not the impact I wanted. I'm, I'm, I represent vengeance and I created monsters. So he has character growth, he is changed. And I can tell in the second movie they will probably explore Bruce Wayne or they will maybe keep going with the action with a No Man's Land storyline. I really don't know what they will be doing in the sequel. I cannot wait to see it, that's all I know. But he realized vengeance is not the answer and he really realized it. Vengeance cannot fix the past. The past is the past, the future is the future. So he has character growth. Is it big, big, big? Not really. It's still character growth. Selena Cal got much more character growth, but that's fine because your main character got character growth as well. Now, let's go to the next issue people have. The length of the movie. I say people have this issue because it's something that keeps coming back in reviews. 
I have no issues with the length of the movie. I did like the movie. Now, can we trim the movie? Yes, we can remove parts of scenes where we have very a very slow pacing because sometimes some scenes have a very slow pacing. But overall, I am satisfied. I like the length so all comes to the taste of the people and it's a very dark movie so it's normal sometimes it can feel long but i will tell you this on my five watch time flew now after watching the movie a few times i do picture exactly where i am in the timeline of the movie so, yeah, it, it's going even faster. Um, because I know what will happen next. And I'm always excited to see it again. And I think I will go back and watch it again next week. I like it. The last issue with this movie. The last I know about that is really popular. The Joker and Riddler scene in Arkham. I do agree with this one. It, this scene can be caught of the movie. It's not a bad scene. It's just adding up on the length of the movie. And I think we cannot really blame Matt Reeves. I think we need to blame Warner Bros. Because they keep wanting us to, to have sequels and more stuff, more content, a bit like Disney, they, they emulate Disney a lot, and Disney always teaches stuff, so the Riddler and Joker is Studio. Studio said, Matt Reeves, you have a great movie, let us add up that scene so we can have our sequel. I really don't like when the studio does it, but we cannot blame Matt Reeves to do so, we cannot blame the director. And we cannot say it's a bad movie because of that. Because it's not Matt Reeves' fault. He did what he needed to do. And at the end, I'm so very happy of this movie. In my own opinion, this movie is probably a 9.5 or 9.7 out of 10. Despite my 4 or 5 issues with it here and there. Now, this video has a lot of issues. I... I spoke about but as I said in the intro these are not all mine these are from reviews from people I only have like four or five issues uh, the message I don't like it the Joker scene I don't like it the headshot scene I don't like it the mayor scene I don't like it it's like four things I didn't like so overall, amazing movie. Um, it's a masterpiece despite all the issues people can find. If we put together several people doing several reviews on every movies, you will find issues. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. Like, comment, and subscribe. We will see each other in future video. Have a great day.